The movie opens up with a woman, Carly, and a man, Mark, enjoying an intimate moment together after they meet each other on a blind date. With this, their romantic relationship springs for eight weeks and the couple seems to be so in love with each other, with Mark showing different romantic gestures to Carly and making her happy. During one of the nights they're together, Carly plans on meeting her father and brother, and Mark suggests tagging along but she refuses saying it's too soon. But Mark reminds her it's been eight weeks, and with this reminder, he presents her a gift wishing her a happy anniversary, and they get intimate. Later, Mark goes home to his wife, Kate. Kate wakes Mark in the morning and they go about their activities. As they prepare to leave the house, Mark presents Kate a form asking her to sign it, saying it's from the accountant. Kate admits that she doesn't understand what it is and needs to go for brain camp while explaining what a brain camp is. Meanwhile, when Carly arrives at work the next morning, her friend and secretary, Lydia tells her that her father called and said they are still on for drinks with Mark. With this, Lydia asks who Mark is, and to her surprise, Carly reveals Mark is the guy she's dating. Lydia is even more surprised to hear that Mark is the only man she's dating, as Carly has a reputation for dating multiple guys at once. Her friend is curious as to why Mark doesn't have a nickname like Carly's previous boyfriends, but Carly doesn't have an answer. She heads back to her desk. In the next scene, Carly calls Mark to remind him about the date with her father, which Mark seems to forget. He gives an excuse of having a meeting with a potential client, but Carly offers to meet him after his meeting, but Mark doesn't comply. However, Carly isn't giving up so Mark concedes, saying he's coming home and drops the call. Soon, Mark meets Kate and while driving her home, he explains that a pipe burst in his bathroom so he has to be home in order to handle it. Carly offers to go with him but Mark refuses, saying she should go meet her father as planned. Carly says she can move the meeting till the next day but Mark reveals he won't be back the next day. Carly gets angry and leaves him. In the night, Carly goes to meet her father at a bar. He asks after Mark and Carly tells him that she thinks they just broke up. She explains that Mark has to go to Connecticut to fix a pipe burst in his bathroom. Her father doesn't understand why it'll cause them to break up and adds that she's just being paranoid. Carly tells her father that something doesn't feel right about Mark's trip to Connecticut, and when she gets such feeling, she's usually right. Her father notices she really likes Mark and advises her to put on something sexy and go to Connecticut and surprise him. Carly takes her father's advice and heads to Connecticut. On getting to Mark's house, she meets Kate who she mistakes to be Mark's housekeeper, but Kate reveals she's his wife, leaving Carly in shock. She pretends to be at the wrong address and is about to leave but she clashes with a flower vase, causing it to break into pieces. She leaves in utter disappointment. Carly goes to work the next morning and sees a bouquet of flowers from Mark on her desk. There's a note attached, but before she can read it, she destroys the flowers in note. Her friend walks in and asks what's wrong. Carly tells her friend about Mark and his wife, and says she doesn't want to continue the relationship because she doesn't want to be responsible for breaking up a marriage. Lydia tries to convince her that a married man is the perfect match for her, but Carly refuses to listen. Later, Lydia calls to tell her that Mark's wife is at the office and wants to talk to her. Carly walks to the front desk and sees Kate standing there. Kate says she got her number from the phone bill. She asks if she can speak with her but Carly says if Kate has any questions, she should ask her husband. In response to Carly's statement, Kate says she knows Mark is lying to her and sleeping with Carly and Carly admits to sleeping with Mark, but reveals she doesn't know he's married. Kate starts to cry and all eyes turn towards her. Carly realizes that she needs to get Kate out of the office before she causes a scene. So, Carly tells Kate that she will answer any questions she has, as long as she leaves the office right away. Kate, desperate for answers, agrees and leaves the office. Following Kate's visit to Carly's office, they meet in a bar at night where they discuss her and Mark's relationship. Kate is curious to know how many times Carly and Mark get intimate and Carly reveals they got intimate 50 times. This enraged Kate as she rants about her sacrifices towards Mark. Carly gives her a piece of her mind and soon they leave the bar with Kate being tipsy and running around. Carly manages to put her in a cab after some struggle. Kate gets home to Mark sleeping comfortably but she doesn't say a word to him. In the morning she goes to the grocery store and hears different women talk about their husbands. This bothers her as she knows her husband isn't loyal to her. After her shopping, she goes to Carly's office once again, this time with her dog. Carly on seeing her, gets angry, saying they're not friends, as she might think and doesn't want to be friends with her. She walks out on her and Kate leaves the premises. Later in the day, Carly hears the doorbell and checks on it to see Kate and her dog again. She can't come up with how she located her house but Kate explains that they followed her back home from the office. She fakes a sob while explaining that she has no money or friends as all her friends are Mark's friends. Carly tells her she can't talk to her till she stops crying. Kate apologizes for getting emotional and Carly advises her on what to do while stating the end of their conversation. Kate gets angry that they didn't have any conversation. Just Carly yelling at her and she's about to leave when Kate calls her back saying she has only one hour if she lets her in. She ushers her in and Kate makes a comment on not wanting to sit where Carly and Mark got intimate. 
After a short while, she finally sits and just as they begin to discuss, Mark calls Carly, but she won't take his call. Kate is concerned that Mark might love Carly and wants to spend the rest of his life with her, but Carly says she doesn't care as she doesn't have any business with married men. She questions if Carly thinks Mark still loves her, but Carly can't answer her question. Instead, she leaves to go get a drink. Carly gets a drink and they continue discussing their situation. Carly and Kate seem to be getting along as she takes her to her closet to pick some clothes and shoes for Kate. They joke and have a playful encounter in the closet and soon they sleep on the couch. In the morning, Kate's dog wakes her up and poops in Carly's living room. Kate apologizes for the mess as they leave the building. They embrace and part ways. The next day, Kate calls Carly who rushes to her house to see she's destroyed a lot of things in Mark's home office. As they talk, Kate's brother, Phil, comes by and Kate introduces Carly as her decorator, while Carly says her name is Carmela. With his arrival, Carly leaves the house while making jokes about Kate's brother. Kate calls her greedy for wanting her husband and her brother and she drives off. Mark comes back to see his office in a strange state and Kate comes out revealing that she started redecorating. Mark reveals he loves the decoration and updates her about his visit to Miami, bearing good news. They embrace and kiss each other with Mark promising to tell her more about it at dinner, which surprises Kate. Later, they go on a date, and Kate calls Carly to update her on Mark paying attention to her like never before. Carly has nothing reasonable to say to her so they both end the call. Kate looks in the bathroom mirror and advises herself to control herself as Mark is an awful guy. After their date, they come home running upstairs, they try to get intimate but Kate interrupts their intimate session, saying she'll be back soon and heads to the bathroom to shave and look good. As she takes care of her body, Mark receives a call from one of his mistresses and he lies to her about being at work. Kate comes out of the bathroom and hears Mark talking to another girl. He notices her presence and returns to the room pretending to be on a call with a business partner. He apologizes and wants to continue their intimate moment but Kate refuses with an excuse of a splitting headache. The next morning, Kate receives a text from Carly while arranging books in Mark's office. The text annoys her and her brother is curious to know why the sudden change of mood. Kate insists she's okay and her brother inquires about Carly, pissing her off. Her brother makes a remark that hurts her and she breaks down, revealing that Carly, who he knows as Carmela, is still seeing Mark. Phil is disappointed to hear this, as he's already picking interest in Carly. He goes on to complain about not liking Mark for once and Carly tells him about the call with Mark's mistress last night. It occurs she takes the lady from the call to be Carly, so she goes out to meet Carly and confronts her. Carly gets mad at her for her question and storms out of the restaurant with Kate stopping her from leaving. They begin to argue and in the course of their argument, they realize Mark is cheating on the both of them, and they both decide to spy on him. In the next scene, we see Mark ready to leave for a supposed business trip. As soon as he leaves, Kate informs Carly and they follow Mark behind to see where he's going. They see him drive into a compound and hide beside the gate to observe. They decide to go to Phil's beach house and he questions what they're up to, because she rarely visits him. Kate tells him about Mark's new mistress and their intentions to find her. Phil tries to talk her out of it and she warns him sternly to keep out of her way. Phil approaches Carly asking her not to hurt innocent Kate, as Mark is already doing that, and she agrees. Soon, Kate finds out Mark's location through a GPS tracker and they both leave Phil's house. They go to a beach where Kate uses a pair of binoculars to spy on Mark and sees him kissing an unknown lady, Amber. Meanwhile, Carly is sunbathing and advises Kate not to lose her cool with the lady, like she did when she first met her. Kate draws Carly's attention when the lady Mark is sitting with gets up. They both gush at her attractive body and suddenly, Carly gets angry and runs off to go confront the lady as she jogs. Kate chases after her, reminding her what she said about being calm. Soon, Kate catches up with Carly, holds her down and they engage in a cat fight. And as they struggle on the ground, they get the lady's attention. She approaches them to know what's going on. Afterwards, Carly and Kate explain Mark's cheating scandal to Amber, who seems remorseful and apologizes to Kate. During their encounter, the lady tells Kate that Mark let her know she cheated on him and he asked for a divorce. Kate gets angry about this and begins to rant. The lady apologizes for revealing it to her but Kate says it's okay, saying she's innocent in all this as she doesn't know Mark is married. They decide to go back to Phil's house and the new lady asks what she's supposed to do, as Mark will soon be back on the beach. Carly says they'll take her number, while Kate suggests the lady stay with them at Phil's house. But Carly reminds her they already have a dog with them. On getting to Phil's house, he shows them what he taught Thunder while they are away and they in turn narrate their ordeal at the beach to Phil. Carly is obviously jealous that Mark has to cheat on her too, which Kate notices and points out, but Carly denies it. Phil makes a joke about Kate which amuses her, causing her to throw a pillow at him and go in. In the evening, Amber visits them at Phil's house. She and Kate are getting along while Carly and Phil go to a special part of his house to have a nice time. Later in the night, they have fun on the beach and Carly jokingly says if they find more mistresses, she'll have to send Kate to rehab. The next morning, Carly wakes up right beside Phil on the bed and worries about getting intimate with him, but Phil assures her that nothing of such happened and explains all that happened last night. 
they have a brief talk and Carly leaves the bed to go shower. After bathing, she meets the two ladies in the dining room and informs Kate that they have to leave soon, so as not to battle with the traffic. But Kate is reluctant to leave as she will be dealing with Mark when she goes home. She reveals her intentions to make Mark hurt and be the one to make him start a whole new life. She further explains that she wants Mark to hurt worse than she is hurting. Amber suggests kicking him in the balls, but Carly suggests something a little bigger than that. Kate feels like their plan doesn't matter as Mark is always going to win, but the ladies assure her that they're with her. They plan to use what each of them have to take down Mark. Back home, they draft a calendar on how to deal with Mark each day. Kate starts by putting estrogen in his drink, making their dog to lick his toothbrush, and dipping it into the toilet. She also pours hair remover lotion in Mark's hair shampoo. Carly arranges a date with Mark and apologizes for overreacting the last time they saw each other. Mark excuses himself to take a call and begins to flirt with the girl. Carly quickly puts laxatives into his drink as he flirts with the girl. He ends the call and returns to sit with Carly. Carly engages him in a discussion as he gulps down the drink. In a short while, he begins to feel discomfort in his stomach causing him to fart uncontrollably. He tells Carly to go and promises to call her later. With this, he runs to the toilet to ease himself. He has a difficult moment in the toilet and when a guy comes in to pee, he hands him some cash, requesting he should get him a pair of trousers, but the employee walks out with his money without getting him anything. Later, he comes home with a different trouser, causing Kate to ask what happened to him. He opens up about having a fecal accident and rushes inside again to use the toilet while Kate laughs at him. Meanwhile, Carly goes to meet her father in a Chinese bar. She throws the question of protecting her money by losing it using Mark as a case study. He gives her an idea and asks if she needs his help but she says she can handle it on her own. In the morning, Carly goes to work and her secretary notices her frowning and asks her to stop it before she breaks her face. Carly gives her a weird smile, saying she's about to screw someone. Meanwhile, Amber hangs out in a bar, with Mark suggesting for a three-way intimate session. But Mark hesitates and eventually agrees after Amber tries to get him on. Unfortunately for Mark, the third person happens to be a male crossdresser. On seeing him Mark tries to object but the guy quickly lifts him from the ground kissing him roughly. Following his experience at the bar, he gets home and is having his bath when he notices his hair falling off. He also notices he's developing breasts. He rushes out of the bathroom to show Kate but Kate on seeing this doesn't take it seriously. She only calls it bloating and suggests he tape his breasts which annoys Mark. Later, the three ladies meet in the park and make fun of all that's been happening to Mark. They talk about his sex drive and Amber suggests one of them should sleep with him, but this doesn't sit well with Kate. Each of them volunteers to do it but Kate won't let them do it. Amber offers to bring a friend but Kate says she can't let a hooker sleep with her husband. With this she volunteers to do it herself, since Mark is her husband. But Carly and Amber say if she does it, they'll all do it. Since none of them seems to agree with the other, Kate suggests they play rock paper and scissors and Amber wins. Carly asks if Kate is okay with Amber sleeping with Mark and she says yes. In the next scene, Kate puts on her wedding gown while watching their wedding video and crying with a bottle of alcohol in her hands. Carly comes looking for her and finds her in a sorry state. She says some comforting words to her and just then, Mark comes home. They scramble to hide Carly but can't find a place in the room, so she eventually hides under Kate's wedding gown. Mark comes in and sees her putting on her wedding gown and she explains that she does it from time to time when she feels like it. Mark invites her to a dinner that'll take place on the weekend and kisses her before leaving the room. Carly quickly gets out of the wedding gown as she's finding it difficult to breathe. She leaves through the window and crashes on a roof. Meanwhile, during the weekend, they attend the dinner party and Mark introduces Kate to one of his partners who exchanges pleasantries with her and introduces her to his wife, revealing that she gave them a profitable business idea. Mark brags about Kate and in that moment gets a huge offer from his business partner, and his wife suggests they have a drink to celebrate. Mark leaves with her to go get drinks, leaving Kate and Nick alone to catch up. After the dinner, they go home and reminisce about their humble beginnings. The next day, Kate meets the ladies and they excitedly update her on what they have been up to regarding Mark. They tell her Amber hacked Mark's computer and also reveals that her husband is not just a cheat but a thief. They tell her about the companies Mark is investing in and stealing from, but Kate seems to be defending Mark, much to their surprise. Amber questions her sudden change towards Mark and she says she thinks things are getting more complicated than they thought. Carly notices that she slept with Mark and confronts her. In her defense, she says they have to forgive people in order to move forward. Carly picks up her phone to text Mark which annoys Kate and she leaves the room saying she's done with them. Amber goes after her, and as they leave, Mark's text comes in confirming he'll be available on Friday for a date with Carly. Later that night, Carly goes on a date with Phil and complains about Mark not reaching out to her, but they don't deliberate much on the issue, instead they make jokes about themselves. The next morning, Mark asks Kate to sign some papers for him as he'll be going to Miami, and Bahamas. This catches Kate's attention and she leaves for Carly's house. On getting to her house, they embrace each other while apologizing. Kate reveals Carly is right about everything she said as Mark won't stop lying to her, 
and treating her like she's blind. She shows Carly a wire transfer instructions for a company in the Bahamas, and also informs her that Mark is flying to Bahamas, and they have to track him down. But Carly says she can't, explaining her reasons. Disappointed, Kate is about to leave her house, and she stops her and thanks her for forcing their friendship on her. They make light jokes and Kate leaves. In the next scene, Kate leaves for the Bahamas alone but on her way. Amber and Carly surprise her by showing up. She runs and hugs them happily and they drive off. On the way, Carly tells Kate about the forms she's been signing, revealing she's the CEO, as Mark used her to create a company and put everything in her name. They inform her that if anything goes wrong she'll go to jail. Kate worries and tries to jump off the car, but Amber holds her back. Carly makes her understand that her name being on everything is good news as they're going to find Mark and set everything right. They get to where Mark is according to GPS, and emerge from flowers, searching for him with their binoculars. Kate finds him and runs off with the others following her to get a closer look. Just then, a lady walks up to Mark and they kiss. Soon, they leave the pool and the ladies drive behind them unnoticed. Finally they get to discover the bank they've been looking for. In the night, the ladies go for a party and Kate is taken to the dance floor by a young man. Meanwhile, Amber reveals to Carly she's seeing someone which Carly seems to know about. After the party, they retire to their rooms to rest. The next morning, Kate goes to the beach and throws her wedding ring into the sea. Her friends join her and comfort her. Later, Carly and Kate drive to the bank to settle the fraudulent act by Mark. In the following scene, Mark goes to Carly's office and meets her secretary, Lydia, who informs him that Carly asks him to wait in the conference room and takes him to there. On getting to the conference room, he meets the three ladies and quickly turns to leave but Lydia already locked the door so he walks back to the ladies. Kate informs him that she wants a divorce but Mark starts pleading, admitting his mistakes. But Kate tells him that sleeping with other people is not a mistake but a pathological act. He asks Kate to help him change as he's willing to change, pointing out Carly and Amber as his mistresses with others she doesn't know. Amber confronts him for telling her he's getting a divorce just to sleep with her. The ladies confront him with evidence of his crimes, and inform him that they know he stole money from many companies. They tell him that because of this, he doesn't own anything anymore. As they continue to detail all of his scandals, Nick enters the room and reveals that Mark is only out of jail because Kate returned all the money he stole. Mark becomes furious, yelling and screaming at the ladies. In his fury, he crashes into a glass wall and injures himself. He runs outside, where he sees his car being towed and tries to stop the tow truck driver, but he drives away with the car. Mark cries in frustration, feeling like he's lost everything. Just then, Frank walks up and punches Mark in the face. Mark falls to the ground, bloodied and dazed. The three ladies' friendship blossoms and at the end, the movie reveals that Kate is now the CEO of several successful companies while Carly and Phil fall in love and are expecting. Meanwhile Frank and Amber begin a relationship and they tour the world together.